Ooh, AMD. Now, as you probably know, AMD has had their CES keynote recently, and they announced some CPUs which didn't quite line up with the CPUs that everybody was kind of hoping for. But this video will tell you why this is a good move from AMD, and you shouldn't be disappointed that they didn't do a Ryzen 9 16 core 32 thread mainstream CPU, and why staying with 8 cores is probably not the worst thing. First off, let's have a look at what the rumored specs were going to be. Now, according to various fairly unlikely seeming rumors around the internet, um, AMD was going to add a new kind of tier of CPUs. They were gonna do a Ryzen 9 lineup, which were going to have 16 cores and 32 threads for just over $500. And they were supposedly going to overclock to over five gigahertz, which would have been insane. For the Ryzen 7 CPUs, it would have gone up from eight cores to 12 cores and 24 threads at over five gigahertz. And the same story for Ryzen 6, where they were gonna add more cores and Ryzen 3, they were gonna add more cores. And now after having a look at the rumors, let's look at what was actually kind of announced at this keynote presentation. Now, we don't have a lot of information about the CPU. Uh, it's a Ryzen 7 CPU from the 3000 series, but we do know it's gonna be eight cores, it's gonna be 16 threads. We don't even know how high it's gonna overclock or what the base clock is gonna be. We have very little information. Although, we do have a view of a Cinebench run compared to a 9900K, and according to AMD, they were both at kind of their standard straight out of the box settings, and the Ryzen 3000 CPU edged out to the 9900K, which is fairly impressive because the 9900K may be hot, uh, be very expensive, but it is a very powerful CPU. Now the first reason is that one of the main changes is it's going down from 14 nanometers to 7 nanometers. Now this die shrink does mean that the CPU would use less power, which would mean you could theoretically put more cores in the same package uh, with the same power consumption, uh, and you could also clock it higher and so on. But one die shrink would not necessarily be able to take an eight core CPU that can clock to 4.3 gigahertz to an architecture that can do 12 cores at over five gigahertz or 16 cores at over five gigahertz. It just didn't seem particularly realistic. Now, the second reason why I think beefing up the core count wasn't necessarily the best idea, and I'm glad that AMD didn't do it, is because eight cores are a pretty good sweet spot at this point. If you're doing content creation, it's enough threads to kind of do it well, and if you're gaming, it's not too many threads that you have to sacrifice on core speed. And honestly, the main point in which especially Ryzen 7 is lacking compared to the competition, things like the i9-9900K, is not in core count and thread amount, it's in actual single core IPC performance. So if they take all of the juicy improvements they can get out of the seven nanometer architecture, and they squeeze that all into better single core performance and higher clock speeds, it's gonna be better for them against the competition than if they just added more cores. And reason number three, honestly, at this point, even Ryzen 2 is fairly competitive against the Intel CPUs that exist, especially from a value perspective. So if they can optimize their eight core CPUs, they're gonna be beating Intel at their own game. And then they can wait for Intel to respond with, let's say, a 10 core i9 mainstream CPU, and then AMD can release a more highly specced Ryzen CPU where if they just released a 16 core Ryzen 9 now, that would kind of be like just playing your trump card right at the beginning of a game. It's not necessarily the best strategic move, and now they have some headroom left, potentially, let's say, theoretically, that the architecture could produce a 16 core Ryzen 9 CPU. They can hold off on that until Intel pr provides effective competition against the CPU like that, because of, you know, market gouging and all that. 
And then the final fourth reason is, well, Threadripper. Because most current applications like games barely even use eight cores. And if you do need the extra threads, you have Threadripper available. I mean, you can buy a 32 core Threadripper CPU. So if they release this Ryzen 9 CPU, 16 cores is more than 99.999% of people need. So if they did release a CPU, why would you buy a more expensive CPU, which has a more expensive motherboard platform? There just isn't much of a point. Yes, you have more memory channels and you can go from 64 gigs of, uh, to 128 gigs potentially, and you have more PCI Express lanes and so on, but it wouldn't be as compelling as it is now for a more professional market space. And with that, I kind of think that's all I have to say about that topic. Let me know in the comment section below what you felt about the news that came out of the AMD presentation. Uh, there's obviously an Intel presentation happened, but you know they didn't really announce anything other than the fact that they're gonna take out things of their CPUs, which, it's a bit of a brave move, I guess, but you know, the same thing goes for Nvidia's keynote. Let me know in the comment section below, actually, what you think of the new Radeon CPU. Now, it seems like it's focused more towards content creators, but if it performs the same as an RTX 2080, it's a very compelling option for people who game at 4K on a single graphics card. Anyway, with that, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And if you didn't like it, dislike it, but tell me in the comment section below why you disliked it. And until the next video, bye-bye.